Well, we welcome you live to Horizon League Basketball here on ESPN Plus and WADL. Let's see Detroit Mercy Titans coming in at 6-10 and 3-1 and and in the Horizon League. And the Green Bay Phoenix, who are 9-7 and seven and 3-0 and oh in the Horizon League as well. Welcome inside Callahan Hall. Jeremy Otto alongside two-time NBA champion and Titan Hall of Famer Earl Curitan. Earl, this is a Titan squad trying to get back on track after a tough loss versus Northern Kentucky. Well, I'll tell you what, off to a great start this year and, you know, the little slip up there with uh, Northern Kentucky, but we got some great teams and it seems like every game we're talking about the top of the Horizon League, you know, and Green Bay comes in here undefeated and it gives uh, the Titans a chance for, you know, for an upset here this evening. Oh, this is a Green Bay team that likes to move real fast, and that's something the Titans haven't seen a whole lot this season. Well, they got they got a reputation of putting the ball in the basket. You know, they in 15 seconds off the clock is going up. They, they run guys in and out of the game. The Titans are going to have to get back and transition and match up. Sandy Corn's going to be a handful for them tonight. Uh, and Jaquan McLeod are two of their top players. But, uh, you know, Sandy Corn, of course, is a big name throughout the whole Horizon League, and he's leading this team in every category. And, uh, He's capable of putting big numbers on the board. Now I have to contain him as well as Jaquan McLeod yeah, here tonight. Along with them too, it's P.J. Pipes, Jaquan Hemphill, and Cody Swartz. The starting five on the other end for this Green Bay squad coming in, winning their first three, one last game than most played in Horizon League because they played Milwaukee to start the Horizon League season. Here are the Titan starters. It's Antoine Davis, the freshman, Phenom at the top. Chris Brandon has played some good minutes of late as well. Darian King picking up the shooting as the season goes on. Josh McFally coming off a rough game versus Northern Kentucky where he went one for 10 from the field. And Gerald Blackshear getting yet another start. The 6-9 center here for this Titan squad. I'm going to look at uh, Link Darner in his fourth season at the helm of this Green Bay Phoenix team I asked him hey have you always had a quick tempo team and he said that's all I know in 25 <laughs> years of head coaching he likes to do that uh, up and down the floor and it works pretty well for him it's a team that scores at a high volume and puts teams on their toes to begin things I'll tell you what it makes recruiting a lot easier players like to play that way it gives a lot of players opportunities to play because if you're going to go up and down the court like that you have to put a lot of players in the game and uh, you'll see probably 10 11 deep uh, with this team here tonight. There's Mike Davis and company. Continuing to see his first season here at Detroit Mercy unfold. Certainly a challenge for him in a different way. He said I had a lot of young guys in my first season at UAB but this team I really had to put together at the last second so he had to you know, kind of weave through the roster and see who he had to play in the early goings. Right. Uh, you know, he's got to get to know his players. His players got to get used to him. It's a new system. It's new players. There's a whole lot of new stuff going on. But so far, he's doing a great job of uh, molding these guys together. It's Blackshear against Hemphill, and Blackshear's going to win the tip. Back off to Antoine Davis. Talk about it as the night progresses, but another nice week of accolades for zero coming into this weekend's games. Turn around two, just inside the three-point line, won't go. And a nice rebound here by Green Bay as they push. This is a team that averages about 15.8 seconds per possession. That's the eighth quickest in the NCAA. Well, we'll see how they handle this pressure of his zone defense from the Titans here tonight. McLeod launches for three, and Darian King is there to pick up that shuddering rebound off the far side of the iron. Good pick by Antoine, swerving to the free throw line. There is King, trying to lead Davis into the corner just a little bit too much. And they change the call. It's going to be Green Bay basketball. The official says it went off the knee. Well, Pipes was trying to fool the official right there. He immediately pointed the other way, but, <laughs> you know, this was right on top of it. Long bomb pass. Darian King going to hoist up for three. It's a brick. There to rebound it, though, as Blackshear gets his own board back again and is able to string that off the top of the iron and back in. Good offensive rebound that time, an active body by Blackshear, and hopefully you see a lot more of that tonight. Swartz bodies up against Blackshear there, and it's picked off by Josh McFarlane. Nothing new for 23. He's done that throughout his career as a Titan. He's able to rain home a three from the near side. And I'll tell you what, that's a good sign. You know, Josh is a guy that can catch on a uh, struggle last game, but I look for him to, you know, to have a big game here soon. And uh, 
this could be the night for him to come out of it and, and do it. We have seen him get some 30 point performances. And just one for 10 on the night for his NKU here at home on Saturday. Deep three by Cohen trying to get the friendly roll. That won't happen and Blackshear able to snatch down the board. Gerald was without a rebound all throughout that Northern Kentucky game. He has two here early on. That's good to see for the Titans and a spinorama move to get free there by Darian King. He wanted the foul as well. See him getting more and more comfortable. He's not hesitating with his shots right now. They need his score. Seven nothing Titans are able to seal home another rebound here. McFally nearly lost the handle at the free throw line and Darian King is going to back up towards midcourt and an illegal screen off the ball. Uh, Fisher showing they stuck that elbow out there and leaned over. You can't lean. You have to be still and holding your position and uh, that offensive player has to use that screen as well. And called on Josh McFally. His first team first in the early goings of this one. Cohen dumps it down to Humphill at the free throw line now. Back out fight for P.J. Pipes and this one is stolen once again here by Josh McFarlane. Second steal the ball game already for him. Blackshear leaning in it won't go. Brandon trying to poke three. Poke free that uh, offensive rebound. Well, you can see early in this game right now, Green Bay is having a little bit of a struggle with that zone. Uh, like the way Blackshear got up and down the floor that time. And here, off a of transition right here, you know, Detroit can really get out and, and push the basketball. You can see right there the nice activity on the backboard. Chris Brandon trying to choke his, his athleticism there. Swartz. Spun to the wing. Finally launched that one through. Couldn't get it to go though. The Titans will push. King. What King's looking confident early in this ball game. Knocking down first two out of his first three shots. Approaching the first media timeout here. That's a blocking foul against Gerald Blackshear. Well, they did a lot of work on Blackshear protecting that middle and getting the position. You know, you have to have your body squared up and be ready to take the charge down there. Caught him a little bit out of position that time. Harrison Curry going to see some minutes here for Gerald Blackshear. Just five minutes of the season, or five minutes in that game versus uh, NKU, I should say. It's his lowest play to the season so far. Coach Davis. Getting him in the lineup quickly here. That three is no good by Darian King. Piped up a couple times by both Brandon and Curry, but coming down with it is Hemphill as he'll push. Cohen. Back to the wing now for PJ Pipes. Long bomb pass to the near sideline now. Tank Hemphill going against Curry. Guarded him well. Outside McLeod able to rain home the three. Well, that's a guy you got to keep an eye on here tonight as McLeod. McLeod can have some big games. He can shoot the outside shot as well as get to the basket. Davis with the aggressive scurry here on the far sideline. We've hit our first media timeout. 10-3 Titans here. Now Mike Davis's squad shooting 44% from the field in the early goings here today. They have a 10 to 3 lead, Earl. Yeah, they got off to a good start, got some quick stops early in the game, forced a couple turnovers, and Titans have been doing a good job of that. I think they're forcing close to 15 turnovers a game now. And see Mike Davis having some conversation with Mike Davis Jr. over there. Uh, two guys. That have been around each other a lot, obviously, but they've also been around each other a lot in basketball. And they're different stops. Is Harrison Curry going to lean in for two? And it's 12 to three Titans. Went up strong, grabbing that rebound and back up with authority. Cohen looking for a lob there for Tank Hempfield. No luck. Crashing through, though. He's able to beat Chris Brandon and Harrison Curry with a double team down low. He's relentless down low when he has the basketball number 10 is. Well, he's a leaper and he plays strong around the basket. Uh, doesn't look like a tank, but he plays <laughs> like one. 
There's a good story behind that. We'll get to it at some point. Antoine Davis for two. Able to crack the scoring column for the first time here tonight. Has an answer for the offense on the other end. Battling in the post there is Manny Patterson, the newly checked in Phoenix here. Young sophomore, plays a big part in the post as well for this squad. It's off the right side of the iron there, off the hands of Sandy Cohen. He's had a slow start so far. That's a win certainly for Detroit Mercy. Curry, strong pass off for Darian King, sputtering away for two, wouldn't go. Chris Brandon there to scramble to the outside. King stepping forward, no. Brandon trying to get another. And it is staying with the Titans here on the baseline. Well, Titans active on that offensive board. You know, you see Curry and, and um, guys there, Chris, Chris Brandon, all attacking the offensive glass. A little change of mind right there by the officials as they're going the other way for Green Bay. It's kind of the second time we've seen that so far here today. We saw it very early on, and the possession remained with the Titans at that point. So far, the Titans are doing a good job of challenging shots out of that zone. They're not giving anybody wide open looks. Their rotation has been on point early in this game. Worked on that a lot in practice. That shot hoisted a little bit too far. Cohen does such a good job rebounding down low, blocked from behind. But a foul is called on Harrison Curry. Boo Birds come out early here at Callahan Hall. Take a second look here. What do you see? There's a good ball movement right there. You can see them attacking the boards right there. A little bit reach down. If you keep that hand straight up in the air and don't let it drop down, they won't call the foul. So Cohen to the line. First time for either of these two teams here today. He's been really good at the charity stripe in his last five games. 89%, 33 for 37 in the last five for his squad. And coming off that big game winner, boy, that was a tough shot that he, you know, he hit against Cleveland State the other night to give them a win. And kind of a pump fake in midair. That's not easy oh, yeah. to do. It's <laughs> almost like he was trying to draw the foul on that play. I don't know if he meant to bank it off the glass, but anyway, he brought it home for him. McFally. A bounce pass off for Davis, and he's going to draw a bump and a foul. Goes against Cam Hakerson. It's a guy who's coming back home this weekend to Detroit, native of Novi. And boy, does he like it here in Detroit. <laughs> Saw him last year in the Motor City Classic as he gave the Titans a good 36 points. Davis, deep tray, you know it. Zero trying to get heated up here in the first half of play. It's kind of letting things come to him, letting other guys get involved, but when you leave him open, you know he'll drain it. Good trap here in the corner. Darian King able to get it back two on one. Davis trying to catch up. He'll shoot right away. It rims off. Harrison Curry with a good job to crash his way in along with Chris Brandon. Maybe a little bit overzealous, though, as they couldn't keep that inbounds on the baseline. You gotta like the effort. Both of those guys, Chris Brandon and Harrison Curry, are both active on both boards. So 13 minutes to go here in half number one. It's a 10-point lead for the Titans early on. They've led the whole way in a 10-0 run to begin things. It's another brick off the left side of the glass. And a team that shoots well from three. They come in at 36%, has been struggling in the early goings of this one. Davis scurrying his way in. And not only did he split the double team off one leg, off balance, he was able to knock that one down. He had a degree of difficulty on that shot. It's amazing. A lead up to 12, that's the most thus far for this Titan squad. Free throw line for Hankerson, back to the outside, sliding three is through by Travion Bell. Travion Bell gives them quality minutes off the bench. Yeah, he'll come in, he can score the basketball. He's one of those freshmen last year that saw a good amount of time. That's part of what makes this team so good. They had some guys who were young, certainly last year, but got thrown into the fire and have shown it this year as Cam Hakerson showing his ability to elevate right. on the baseline. I like that. When you go to the basket with authority, good things happen for you. Uh, he went in there to dunk that basketball. If you don't finish it, you're almost guaranteed to get a foul. Foul goes against Chris Brandon. That's already his second. 
Uh, you wonder how we let a kid like Hangerson get out of Detroit and go to Green Bay. Huh? You know, <laughs> he's in the same conference, and uh, you know you want to you want to not let those kids get away because he, as you can see, they come back with a vengeance. Hankerson, a guy that started a lot of games last year. But when you look at his career numbers, bench for starter, his starting numbers are slightly better. Averages a couple more, or his bench numbers are a little bit better, I should say. Averages a couple more points a game. Are you sure he's got a lot of family and friends here watching him tonight? Yeah, both today and at Oakland on Saturday. Great opportunities for him being from Michigan. McFally, deep three, looking for his second in a row. He buries it. And look out. If these two guys right here can catch on, boy, I tell you what, look, waiting for him to have a, a big game and first two shots going down from long range. Titans two out of four from three. On the other side, they're only one for seven. Trying to change that is Bell. No luck. It's Harrison Curry camps out underneath the glass and picks that one up for the Titans. McFally shows some good handles here. Drives to the cup, kisses it off the glass and in. Bubbling with a little confidence there. Good drive to the basket, mixing things up. Pipes barreling his way through the center of the lane there. Takes us to our second media timeout. 24-11. In favor of the Titans here, just under 11 to go in this one. The Little Caesars Arena Horizon League Men's and Women's Basketball Championship is coming to a campus near you. Quarterfinal games take place March 5th and 6th. The highest seeds in the semifinals and championship games take place March 11th and 12th right down here in Detroit at Little Caesars Arena. To learn more, visit horizonleague.com. Hey, Jeremy, you talked about how fast that's coming. It's coming right at us, huh? Yeah, no doubt. 56 days. It's not uh, much at all. Harrison Curry. Is able to pull down that rebound. 24 to 11, the Titan lead right now. Davis. And I tell you what, a rhythm shooter right there. He's a couple of bounces and he gets you off balance. And he doesn't need much room right there. He jumped up and knocked that one down deep. Ooh. Powerful slam off the hand of Travion Bell. Bell made up for the missed layup that time, going with some authority on that slam. Davis already with 10 points. Hard contact there, and they call it travel as he tried to split a couple, and Davis is feeling a little bit on the deck there. Yeah, he's a little slow getting up off the floor that time. Uh, it don't look like he uh, bumped his head, but he went back pretty hard that time. He's a little slow getting up. It's not what you like to see, kind of holding his elbow as well. Now Jacob Holland was in for a second, but Josh McFoley is right back in for him here. 27-13, the Titans lead. Approaching the midway point here in half number one. Bell got it stolen by McFoley. His third of the game, and McFoley lays it up and in. And that's his forte right there, playing those passing lanes. He's got the best hands and quick feet and anticipating passes. Jumped out and uh, was able to steal that basketball right here. You can see the pass is coming right around from right here. But Farley's always, uh, you know, playing and looking into the passing lane. He jumps right out in front of that pass right there and out on a break in transition. And uh, he's off to a great start here tonight. His third steal. And he already has 10 points early on in this ball game. You know, you want to wait to see these two guys right here. If they both can catch on fire, they can make some long nights for other teams because they both are capable of scoring the basketball. But thus far, you know, both players, uh, you know, haven't had those kind of nights together. Uh, you know, Josh started off, you know, early this season. He had a 20-point game earlier in the season. And uh, you want to get some consistency out of those two guys at the, at the guard position. Nice cut to the basket and a little roll off the back and in. It's Josh McNair seeing some time here. 
Just four points for Cleveland State of Steel and a couple offensive rebounds in eight minutes. Starting to see time again after he didn't play the second and third game of the conference season. Darian King confident here tonight. That one won't go. Marquise Moore with the rebound. Quick slide outside to Josh McFally, and he's feeling it tonight. And a lot of confidence, and it does a world of wonder when you get off to a good start and get that confidence going early. Three for three from behind the long line to go with 13 points. Answering back on the glass is Josh McNair. He has four quick ones. So you have McFally, Curry, Darian King, Marquise Moore, and Antoine Davis. And Davis is held as he tried to motion his way back to the wing here. It's P.J. Pipes who grabbed him on the go around. Well, you see Josh is doing a lot of the point guard duties right here. And, uh, you know, giving Davis a chance to come off screens and trying to free him up and get him going. And uh, both of those guys are putting the ball in the basket right now. And that's something for Green Bay to have to worry about. Titan shooting just over 50% from the field to begin this game. Killer crossover. Can he make a pay? You know it from behind the long line. Wow. He's feeling it tonight, boy. I tell you what, that basket's big as the ocean right now for, for Josh. <laughs> Trying to answer right back is McLeod, and he does. McLeod will continue to keep coming at you all night long. That, you know, that's a player right there that can, he finds a way to score that basketball. And, uh, you know, you got to pay attention to him for the whole 40 because he can put points on the board. Screen there by Moore caused Davis to be in a double team. Darian King is open. That one going to flip into the hands of Bell as they look to push. Pipes for three. He notches it home. And this is how this quick offense can get right back into a ball game, Earl. Oh, they're never out of it. Uh, you know, they were down by a ton of points to Cleveland State, and with a little bit of ball pressure, they were right back in the game You know, before you could nod your head. So. Sandy Cohen doing a really good job on defense in that effort to come back as well. It's something that Link Darner and company are talking to him about to continually improve as the season goes on. 35-23 in favor of the Titans here. Thirty-five twenty-three is the lead for Detroit Mercy early on. You get a look at Sandy Cohen. Look at those accolades. He leads Green Bay in points, rebounds, assists, steals, blocks, and minutes. And he is the only player in D1 to lead all those categories. That's pretty impressive. Uh, you're talking about all around play. He does it all over the court, night in and night out. He's 0 for 4 from the field here early on. It's not often you can say that. Nice touching play to Josh McNair for the slam. It's a great penetration by Cohen that enabled them to get that easy layup. Once you get inside the gut of that zone, that's when you're able to pick it apart. It's his third assist. He also has three rebounds. He can take no breaks on either end of the feet, either end of the courts for this uh, Phoenix squad. Davis, what a nice move. And Davis doing a good job looking to attack, not settling for the long outside shot. That time got to the basket. And slice an eight nothing Green Bay run. Had it rolling for a little while there after struggling to get it going offensively. This one gonna shift right into the hands of Harrison Curry. McFally has been unconscious today. Heat check there as it slides off the left side of the iron. Titans doing a good job last time protecting that baseline down there and that's where teams have been finding openings inside of that zone but the rotation was quick and fast that time and they got over there and didn't give up an easy bucket. It's McFally's first miss from threes, four out of five, six out of eight from the field in general. Another lob play down low. This time it's Tank Hemphill crashing in to lay it off the glass. Just what I'm talking about, the backside of the zone. You got to be aware of that. Holland lost that for a second, loose on the floor. Darian King got a piece of it as well. Hemphill moves it back outside, fresh 30 as well. Tucked down for Hemphill. He finishes through the contact. Well, it's a good interior pass in that time. Corn once again with a nice pass inside of the lane. Easy layup for the tank. 
He's called Tank because he was a big baby. So his mom gave him the nickname <laughs> Tank. I think it stopped right there. He, <laughs> <laughs> he was huge as a baby, but it's, you know, he plays like a tank, though. He's, he's aggressive on offensive boards. It, it was fitting as his basketball career unfolded for sure. This lead shrinking for Detroit Mercy, now just seven. As Davis runs the point. Antoine has 12, coming off a 33 point performance versus Northern Kentucky. Holland with a nice jockeying step towards the basket, lays it up and in. Well, Titans are definitely going to need 40 minutes of basketball against this team tonight. Cohen slides it back outside, and it's Hankerson who lights it up from three. Showing him another one of his talents. The assist now knocking down a three-point shot. He is the glue for this team. First three oh. made today by Hankerson. First points from the field as well. He shoots 34% <laughs> from three. And that's another area where he's tied in the horizon for steals right now. He's, he's tied for first for steals in the horizon league. He does a good job of doing that as well. Yeah, 16 of them checking into play tonight. Twenty five seconds on the shot clock still all Green Bay in the last five minutes or so they're on a 16 to four run. It's going to stay that way as McFally airmails it over the head of Harrison Curry. Well he recognized that Harrison was wide open just a little bit too much mustard on that ball that time that was a you know right over the head that's a pitch that got away. Approaching the last five minutes of this first half. Still a six point lead. They're trying to slice into that even more with the three ball there. No good. Hankerson with an offensive board. Oh, set up back to the outside. Cohen, another lob down low. Boy, they like that play here today. It doesn't work though. One I know for Josh McFowley trying to elevate and slam it home. But a foul from the backside there by Cohen. Well, Jeremy, that's what I'm talking about. See, you got to love the way. If he didn't go in there and attack that basket to dunk at that time, that probably would have been a missed layup or a block shot. But by him going with some authority like that, he's going to get the foul. He's going to score a bucket. Something's good going to happen out of that. I love to see guys attack the basket that way. Cohen still pleading his case with the official. Cohen does a really good job of catching up on those plays and blocking them from behind. He's very athletic. Well, we've seen him do that a few times against Cleveland State in that game. But see, by Josh going in trying to dunk the basketball, he didn't give him a chance to to get his hands on that one. First free throw is up and through. McFally a 77% career free throw shooter for the Titans. Marquise Moore seeing some time here in the first half is back into the Titan lineup. Chris Brandon also coming back in his first time since picking up his second foul pretty early on here in half number one. Titans missing a couple players tonight and other guys will have to step up and just getting Willie back and Willie's out with a concussion protocol after bumping his head pretty hard last game on the floor. Yeah, his first game back took him a long time to get back in terms of communicating with the NCAA and getting the right paperwork he needed to and then hits his floor 11 minutes into his Titan career unlucky Hankerson rising up for three. 41-36, Cam Hankerson. You, you said it, uh, you know, in our conversations leading up to this game and today, he's a guy that performs here in his home city of Detroit. No doubt. He comes off the bench and he brings that extra energy that they need. You know, this team is a high-scoring team, and most of them got the green light to shoot the basketball when they come in. They get shots up in less than 15 seconds. So, you know, you got to love playing in a system like this. There he was stepping into the passing lane as well. Trey Mercy has 15 seconds to shoot here. McFally has had no range here today. He's hit some deep shots as he's tightly guarded that time by Jaquan McLeod. McLeod, a guy that's been quiet today, just six points. He averages 15, three rebounds, 26 minutes a game. He had a career high 25 points versus Cleveland State. An efficient eight of 15 shooting for him. And then Cohen stole the light from him. You know, you think you might get some accolades out sure. of that, but <laughs> his teammate just took that away. <laughs> Davis. Wow. How smooth is that from zero? 
fading away, leaning back on one leg, but he's always focused at putting that ball in the basket no matter what angle it is. Cohen thinks about it. Thought better as he shifted it off to McLeod. Thinks about driving. And that's going to be a charge taken by Cole Long. Cole just checking into the ball game. He does that quite well in his Titan career. 43 to 36 in favor of Detroit Mercy here. Now, well, Josh McFally, a big reason why the Titans are up in this game as you take a peek at the Horizon League standings. Green Bay right there, Detroit Mercy all tied up with NKU and Oakland. And Oakland is always a big game when they face up against Detroit Mercy, but uh, certainly next weekend is going to be a, a really good thing to watch, you think, for both of these two teams. Well, no question. It doesn't matter what their records are. When they get together, uh, you know, it's always a good game. It's always looking forward to having that team from down the road come here. Here's Chris Brandon. Back off for Marquise Moore. Cole Long stays in there after taking a charge. Emphatically throws it down. And the whole bench is erupted. <laughs> Watch Cole Long going there and throw that down. Not known for great leaping ability, but he got up that time and slammed it home. You could see that coming from the free throw line there. Hemphill. Trying to swerve his way in, no. And a good seal down rebound by Chris Brandon. Davis trying to put his defender on a string here as Cohen going to pick up that loose ball on the deck. Nearly got swiped by McFally. Ball was loose. Hemphill going to lean it outside and ducking. His way down the baseline there is P.J. Pipes. Draws a foul. Well, Antoine with a little bit overhandling that time. Cohen doing what he does best, snuck out and was able to steal that ball to give him easy opportunities at the other end. Look at Link Darner chatting with uh, Javon Smith, who's about to check in. Here for Green Bay. Well, he's got confidence in each and every one of these guys. They all know, and you know, just like I mentioned earlier, he'll go 10, 11 deep into his bench because he wants to keep this pace going all game long. Uh, remind me of another guy back in the day named Paul Westhead that ran an offense that was high octane and with Loyola Marymount back in the day with Hank Gathers and those guys. They had a great team that scored a lot of points and was fun to watch. 45 to 38 Detroit Mercy time ticking down here in the opening half of this ball game. Titan offense busily running around here trying to get some guys open. Davis just needs a little bit of space spin and he got the roll. I'll tell you what he's got great footwork. He's under control. You know he can spin. He's quick as lightning. He's a hard guy to guard for. Now they're intercept by Josh McFally deep tray. Nothing but air that time. Well, Josh is pointing right now. His quick shot right there. He know that was uh, his fault. But you know you don't mind him putting that basketball up. You know you got to take shots to make shots. So you know that wasn't a great shot that time. But thus far, you know you want him to continue to keep looking for opportunities to put the ball in the basket. He's missed his last two, but he's still six of nine from the field. Four to six from three-point land as well. Bell gets that one off for Hankerson. And Falls loosely into the hands of Marquise Moore there. Titans will take it up a little slower this time. Nice crossover move. Fading away is Antoine Davis. Man, nice crossover, nice lean. And he's, you know, he's got the ability to almost like uh, Air Jordan on a fade on that shot right there. It's only one, <laughs> not, not that I'm comparing him, but I'm just saying that's a shot. It's <laughs> a shot that Jordan used to take a lot. <laughs> It's up to 18 points already here in the first half. First shot taken by Smith is off the inside. Good job here by Detroit Mercy to rebound. They've rebounded pretty well here today. And got some offensive boards for their liking. Down low for Chris Brandon. He joins the scoring party. 
Well, you got to like this. They got a lot of guys involved tonight, moving that ball around. Guys are getting on the, on the score. It's not just a, a one-man show, and that's what the Titans have been looking for, guys, to come in and be more aggressive offensively and uh, seeing a lot of that here tonight. Hemphill stripped to the basketball again. Here's Josh McFally, hop, step, move. Rivers Glasser won't go. Trying to dive in for the offensive board is Marquise Moore, and a foul is going to be committed as they started their run out. Well, those, are, those are the baskets you got to put down right there. Josh with a little Euro step right there, but he's got to make sure he finished that one. And is the eighth team foul on the Titans, seven on the other end. So that's going to bring up a one and one. Mike Davis got to be pretty happy with his team. And the early goings here, so we'll stick with you through this uh, timeout. He just wants to talk things over. Yeah, the only thing about, you know, a game like this, when you're playing Green Bay, it's going to take 40-minute effort, regardless of how, how well you play. Right here, you see Davis with the ball. Good pass, good ball movement this time. A lot of guys touching it, and they find Chris underneath the basket for the easy lay-in. And uh, got to love that ball movement right there. But a team like Green Bay, they're never out of a basketball game. Uh, that's what they've known. They're averaging close to 86 points a game. And, you know, no matter, you can't get content with the way you're playing. You can't get content with what kind of lead you got. you got to have 40 minutes solid going at them. And uh, the Titans going to have to continue to stay on a, a tear like they are right now. Antoine Davis two points away from his 12th 20 or more game. He has seven 30 plus games and two of 40 or more. See a variety of different guys putting the ball in the basket and uh, you're always going to play with it. You see Long going in get the slam dunk and you know that encourage him to do a little bit more out there on the court. Fans getting into it here at Callahan Hall liking what they're seeing out of this Titan squad. Yeah, I'm sure both coaches, uh, you know, they're talking, and uh, defense is uh, something that the Titans have been given a lot of credit for early this season. And uh, so far, you know, doing a pretty good job on one of the high-scoring teams right now with 54 seconds left, and they got 38 points on the board. They have to continue and try to finish this minute out strong. And Mike Davis has talked about all conference season and leading up to the conference season. Hey, I, I really only want to play eight guys, but he's been able to open up the bench a little bit more here today because the Titans have had to lead the whole ball game for the most part. Well, I guess a team like this, you want to have a variety of players ready because they're going to run 10 11 at you and it's going to be a fast play pace game. So if you want to keep your energy level, uh, you need to be able to get multiple guys in to, to make sure that happens for you. Chris Brandon is out. Darian King is in. Free throw going to fall its way through. Darian King today, 15 minutes, two out of seven from the field. Three rebounds, five points. Made a three ball as well. He was hot early on in this game. Cooled down towards the middle part of the first half. Davis in big time traffic there as Marquise Moore did a good job to sky up for that offensive board. He had both hands on it. He couldn't pull it in, uh, but it stays right here with the Titans. Davis going to trigger here from the baseline. Gets it to Cole Long. He's wide open. Cole will take that all day, every day, huh? Green Bay blew that defense assignment. As Cole Long <laughs> snuck right in there for an easy bunny underneath the basket. 13-point lead for Detroit Mercy here. Just 30 seconds left and ticking here in half number one. Their traps in the corner have been pretty good, like you see there. Lob way over the head of Tank Hempville out of bounds. Well, just the way uh, the Titans want to finish this half out right here. They get an opportunity now with 20 seconds to get a good look and uh, try to take this lead into the locker room. Up 13. Have a chance to extend it to even more here. Marquise Moore has it taken away, though. And another steal by Josh McFoley on the backside. Quickly offered Darian King. Hoist went up quickly. And we'll battle for this in the corner. And time will wind down. 
did get the shot off, but no chance for that one to flutter its way into the net. It's a good half of play for Detroit Mercy. They're up 13 as we head to the halftime break room. Well, that's a little different from you know, the last two games they play. Usually going in, uh, you know, with six six points down, they go in with a 13-point lead, and that's how you want to close the half out. So look forward to an exciting second half of basketball. It's been four different events. We started year one in Joe Lewis Arena as a total experiment. How's this going to work, right? So that we kind of started there. So first tournament in Joe Lewis, first tournament in a long, long time in a neutral site. Year two in the Joe was last year in the Joe. It was a different brand. We, we were, I think, the last college basketball game in one of the iconic buildings in the city. And we played to that. Now year three, we have another, another inaugural. Year three, we're playing in one of the best arenas in the country. Maybe the newest, I don't know, have all the data in front of me, but maybe one of the new, newest and best arenas to come online in some time for hockey and then for basketball for the Pistons. To be able to do that year one, first conference tournament, in Little Caesars, unbelievable. And now year four, we get to try something different again. We get to have our championship game there, two men and women, our semifinals there on Monday, and we get to take our early round games back to the campuses, uh, which really provides some leverage and keeps some interest. And you know, what we learned was six dates in Little Caesars, that was a big ask for our fans and a big ask for the Pistons and for the Wings. So I think on this one, everybody kind of wins and then we'll learn a whole lot about this, which will provide the framework for the potential of returning to Detroit or going to other communities in collaborative ways. So it's pretty exciting if you think about it in that way. That's why how I've reflected on it. It's one of the really uh, interesting stories about our league over the last five years. And I don't think there would be disagreement. Five years ago, we just weren't very good. I mean, we weren't very good in women's basketball. I mean, I can remember seeing it and understanding it, notwithstanding Green Bay. Right. It was Green Bay and like w way everybody else. I mean, way everybody else. A lot of 16 and 0s, yeah. <laughs> you know. And then our ADs, and it was interesting, by golly, we're going to get better. And I think that was through the hiring of some very talented coaches, young, aggressive, innovative. And then you've seen this. Welcome back to Callahan Hall. Jeremy Otto alongside Earl Curitan to bring the call of this game here today. Detroit Mercy up 53 to 40 over Green Bay. Take a look at some out of town scores as well. Cleveland State trying to not drop their fifth straight game to start the conference season in a row as they take on IUPUI. They're up 39 to 31. Oakland also down to Milwaukee 34 to 27. So those are certainly some uh, big scores to watch, Earl. Oh, no doubt. You know, Milwaukee will be in here on Saturday, and, uh, you know, that's that's the team. But it's like I said, it's parity throughout this league. You don't know who's going to get it done or when they're going to get it done. You know, you would look and think Oakland may be up by a ton, but you, know, you got to be ready to play. Shifting shifting back to the focus of this game, what do you think uh, for that second half of play coming up? Well, it was a great first half of basketball. I thought, you know, the Titans did what they needed to do. Uh, they take a 13-point lead. Uh, into the locker room, but that, they, they can't be content with that. That's something they'll have to capitalize on. They'll have to come out the second half and be ready because if you bet an eye, Green Bay will be right back into the game. And well, they've certainly shown that they can rally throughout the season and in their last game versus Cleveland State way down the stretch in the last couple minutes. Second half coming up next. Don't go anywhere.
Detroit Mercy up 13 as we venture towards the second half of play. Jeremy Idle back alongside Earl Curitan to bring you the call here tonight. Field goal percentage pretty even. At one time, it was heavily in favor of Detroit Mercy. Green Bay was able to close the, back, the gap at around the middle point of that first half of play. It's 56 to 43 in favor of Detroit Mercy from three. Detroit Mercy 7 to 16. 5 of 15 on the other end for Green Bay. You got to almost expect that 5 of 15 to pick up in the second half if oh, the Titans. No doubt. McLeod, Cohen, Pipes, you know, all these guys are capable of knocking down uh, knocking down the three ball. They can shoot the basketball well from the outside. And, uh, you know, those guys looked at those numbers at halftime. You can look for them to start being a little bit more accurate from out there. And Phil. Seven points in that first half. Slides it outside McLeod trying to light it up right away. And Gerald Blackshear going to deny him that chance. Davis back up for Darian King. Now deep out for Antoine. Steps to the middle and drains it. And I tell you what, that's a big bucket right there for Detroit to push that lead you know, up to 16 points. And that's the way you want to come out. Antoine, an efficient 9 of 13 from the field so far here tonight. He's now five of seven from three as well. Showcasing the handles early on here in the second half. Great take to the bucket as he lays it up and lays it in. Man, he's mixing it up right now. That was a nice move to get to the basket. Not just settling, got in there and laid, finger rolled that one over the top. And the Titans continue to expand upon their lead. This is the largest right now at 18 and counting. Little stutter step move by P.J. Pipes. Can't get the carom off the back of the iron. Here's Davis up the floor quickly. Already has 23. Antoine struggling to get his way to the basket. Just getting anything he can underneath that one as he lays it up and in. Wow. When you're going well, you're going well, huh? Yeah, he's doing everything he can, and he's got them off to a great start here uh, in the second half. And this is just the way the Titans uh, need to come out. Yeah, he's a little shaken up. See him leaving off the floor right now. Oh, it looks as if he bumped knees. Uh, and hope that's just the case right there. It's probably a little stinger on his knee, and that hurts pretty bad when you do that, though. It's, you know, so they'll go over there and rub that and get him back together. Thankfully, if you're a Detroit Mercy fan, they have a 20-point lead right now, still with 18 minutes to play in the second half. Hemphill slides inside against Gerald Blackshear, and Gerald's going to take the charge. <laughs> and they, wor they worked on that in practice, you know, all doing that and worked on the drive because this team likes to come off. He's right there. He's outside of the line. Good positions, hands straight up in the air. Great job by Gerald Blackshear that time. Gerald seeing just four minutes in that first half of play. Seeing his minutes decrease in the last couple of games. Trying to pick it back up again here in half number two. He had an early foul in this one. McFally, deep range. He knocks it down. Uh, I guess the fire's still burning right there. And, and this is what you need if Davis is going to go out, you know, and you still got Josh on fire. It's a 10-0 run by the Titans here to start half number two. Cohen guarded by Moore pretty tightly. Marquise has played some minutes in this one as Cohen, a little hop step move below the free throw line there. He's heading to the free throw line for the second time today. Well, you know, this team, Green Bay, they like to give you some up fakes and get to the basket, and you have to have somebody in there to protect the middle one. So far, the Titans are doing a good job of plugging that middle up. Moore got a piece of that basketball. Here's Josh McFowley for the slam. 23 with some emotion after that one. The Titans have opened up a can here in the second half of play. They lead by 25 with 17 minutes to go. Well, 6-1 on the roster, 6-9 at heart on this play, though. Well, you can see Josh right there jumping into those passing lanes, going up high with the slam dunk right there. And we've been, we've been waiting for that to come to life, right? You get both of these guys playing, they're going to be tough. And Coach Davis 
this is something that he's been talking about. You want to get consistency. And if you can get these two guys playing the way they're playing here tonight, I tell you, you know, it's going to be some tough nights for teams in the horizon. Josh has five steals in this ball game. He's one away from his career high. That's the most steals in a game by a Titan since Jermaine Jackson had nine in an NAI game versus the Saints of Siena Heights. Detroit Mercy lead is 25. They have another chance to extend that here. And once again, they're forcing those turnovers right now and uh, doing a good job of taking care of the ball, but forcing the other team into a lot of turnovers here tonight. That's the 15th turnover of the ball game for Green Bay. It's a team that is top nine in the nation in terms of not allowing turnovers on the offensive side of the basketball. Darian King in big time traffic there. Curry ran into his own man and Marquise Moore. Curry gets it back, dumps it down low for Chris Brandon, and the Titans will spin it back outside and take some time here. Antoine Davis still on the bench. Probably a lot has to do with the score. He was roughed up a little bit in the early stage of the second half. There's McFally taking it all the way to the hoop. Uh, and, and you want to give him as much rest as you possibly can. Right now, Josh has got it going, and the team's playing well. There's no need to, to rush to get him back in there right now. Loose on the deck as that one's going to skip its way by. Back to the outside and spinning his way through is Jaquan McLeod. So McFally and Davis alone have outscored Green Bay today. They have 50 compared to Green Bay's 42. And this is what you want to happen. You don't want, you know, Davis has had some great games, but you want to get that help and get somebody else to chip in and work with him and I think Josh has kind of figured that out here tonight. So Antoine Davis will re-enter this ball game here as we head to the media timeout. 1544 is still left to go in the second half. Titans up big. Josh McFally five out of eight from three. Here's his most recent one. Range hasn't mattered for 23 today. Three or four feet away from that three-point line, and he's you know he still knocked that shot down. Five three-point makes, nine of 14 from the field, 25 points, no assist, one turnover, and five steals for the senior guard. Lots of time still left in this ball game right now. Like I said, 40 minutes of basketball is a key factor for the Titans tonight. Yeah, this is a Cleveland, or it's a Green Bay team that taught that to Cleveland State. Right, it doesn't matter, you know, and that's why there's no way, especially with this kind of scary, with this much time left in the game, they have to continue to keep this type of intensity and continue to play well. 15 lead changes and five tie scores in that ball game, despite the fact that Cleveland State really pulled away in the middle part of the second half in that game. There's Sandy Cohen. Well, you're going to see the pressure come soon, and they'll jump into a man to man, jump switching, try to junk this game up a little bit. Cohen now has four. Those were his first points from the field. It's a guy that's averaging 17 a game. Here's Davis sliding his way to the basket there, drew another foul call. And I love the way that he's, he's mixing things up. Uh, he's going to the basket with a little bit of authority now and saw him struggle with that a little earlier in the first couple of games during the season, but he's starting to pick that area of his game up. Well, Antoine Davis was able to break a, another Titan record with his ninth point of this evening. He passed Ray McCallum. Her first all time scoring by a true freshman as a tight. So he continues to break records and break his own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's in the talk. He's in the talks about a lot of stuff. Boy, I tell you, a lot of different areas. He's in the conversation. McNair over to Helmfield. Down low, Cohen. Nice reverse. Glasser got the roll as it sputters its way through. And puts up 46 and counting on the board for the Phoenix. Josh McFally going to check back in for Marquise Moore now. 
Marquise seeing his most minutes in a while. He has nearly 13. A couple assists in this game, a few rebounds for the Titans as well. Well, that's one thing, you know, each guy that he's put in the, in the game has made some type of contribution tonight, and uh, that's what you expect. You've got to be ready when opportunities present themselves, and some of these guys have stepped up and took advantage of their minutes. Yeah, Marquise, another one of those young freshmen for Mike Davis' squad. Shown energy on the floor and in practice at times, and he's earned some time. Here's McFally. Free lane to the basket there, as you can just see the expression on Link Darner's face after that one. Wasn't happy as he... Well, here you go. It's a, it's a great move by Josh right here. The only problem is, is just finishing that shot. If you get an opportunity to get there like that, you want to put that one down. Yeah, not sure that he had the angle to do what he did earlier, just dunk the basketball. But that's something we saw from him in the first half, which allowed him to finish the points. He got the foul out of it. That's good. You know? But... I'm sure he wants to put it in the basket. I could tell by the expression on his face. He was hoping that that one failed for him. Sixty nine forty seven Detroit Mercy here to a lot of time to go in the second half. Curry bullies his way home for the offensive board crashes it off the glass and in <laughs> good offensive rebound that time by Curry showing the physical strength that he has right now and uh, you know, I watched him. You can see right here as the shot goes up the free throw. Harrison's quick off his feet. Nice bounce going up and showing the ability of strength. And he's, he's got some serious strength in his upper body. And you know, Coach Davis has been a little concerned about his conditioning. They had him doing some extra work the other day to try to get that conditioning up so he can be able to play more quality minutes for him. And rebound number six for Harrison Curry on the campaign. He has three on the offensive glass tonight as well. Pretty impressive. Up in the net on the other side is Cam Hankerson. There's a stretch in that first half of play where it looked like he might uh, you know, kind of start to go off like he's done quite a bit against the Titans in his career. But Detroit Mercy did a good job of surrendering him as Gary and King chipping in for the first time in a little while with a three. And that's that third score that the Titans need. And Darian King, you know, he's starting to get a little bit more confidence, averaging about 13.5 since the rising play has started. And uh, he can put the ball in the basket as well, you know. So that's another guy that you want to be the third or second wheel scoring for you. And Darian has a five game streak of double digit scoring. It's a guy, when you talk to the coaching staff, they expect that to continue to trend upwards for the graduate transfer. Well, you can see his confidence. Uh, you know, when the, the first couple of games, he was a little hesitant about taking his shots, and now he's kind of just letting it go and getting a little bit more relaxed in his system. Faking the shot on the other side is McLeod. Gets it right back down the middle now for Cohen. Drapes it to the free throw line for McNair. Just seven to shoot. Now often they get it in this situation. That's a long two by Jacon McLeod to make it 75 to 51. Well, they're going to make Davis work as hard as he can. He's picked up again the length of the court. For sure, he's got to work for everything that he gets. King with another deep three. They left him open that time. There's Harrison Curry with another big offensive rebound, giving Detroit those extra opportunities. Davis calls for it. He has 26, him and McFally with that same 26 mark. Brandon, good. That's Cam Hakerson flushing it on the other end. Got to get back and not wasting any time pushing that ball up the floor. 6'5", 200 pound athletic forward, able to slam that one home. Subtle tip by Chris Brandon. Two athletic bodies right there. Chris Brennan doing a good job of cleaning up a Curry miss. He now has three points. Spinning quickly towards the lane there is Bell. Can get that one to go. Good job by McNair to follow it up for two. Now it's 77-55. Phoenix can't quite get a stop on the Titans. That's been the problem here in the second half of play. Continue this pace up and uh, 
Titans have to continue to keep rebounding, playing solid defense, and keep putting that ball in the basket. Josh McNair, a guy that's been dealing with a lower body injury. They weren't sure whether he'd play here tonight. Did practice a little bit yesterday. If you're Phoenix Faithful, you're happy to see him out there on the floor. Everybody kind of a little bit banged up at this point. Davis, killer crossover, couldn't make him pay though as Sandy Cohen was there for the defensive rebound. Cohen, good crossover himself as he drives to the basket and a jump Whoa. ball is called. Once again, Titans doing a great job of solid defense, forced to jump ball. The arrow favors Detroit Mercy. They'll have the ball when we come back. Now this is the third game of a five game home swing here for the Detroit Titans. Milwaukee here on Saturday at Callahan Hall. Love to see you out here and certainly next Saturday is always a big one. First leg of the Metro series as Oakland comes a calling. That's going to be a big game standings wise as well. well. Oakland always bring a busload of people with them down here to Callahan Hall and uh, you know, we look forward to seeing them coming to the building uh, you know and uh, that will be an exciting game for fans in Detroit as well as the Oakland fans. Davis Cole Long, Darian King, Chris Brandon, Josh McFowley out there right now for the Titans and an offensive foul is called there as it was off the basketball that time by Darian King. You have to be careful setting those screens. This is a really paying close attention to that. The group out there for Green Bay at Sandy Cohen running the point as you see him have the basketball here. P.J. Pipes has been quiet today. Bell along the right side. McNair along with a Hankerson in the paint right now. Cohen ducking his way down low couldn't get that one good job by Hankerson to slide it back outside but it's right into the welcoming arms of Antoine Davis perfect skipping pass for Josh McFoley he's been on fire tonight tell you what is it's really fun to watch these two guys the way they're playing basketball tonight they're both entertaining us here on the offensive end of the floor great pass that time by Davison to, to Josh three ball number six for the senior guard This foul is going to be on Cole Long. That's one reason why Long has struggled to get into the lineup for the Titans. Foul trouble more than often. Well, he's a guy that, you know, I, I always like Cole Long. He works hard. You know, he'll get offensive rebounds. He does a lot of dirty work, a lot of things that really don't show up on the stat sheet. And I think he's going to pay some dividends as the season go on. He's a guy that you can count on. And, uh, you know, always have the right attitude no matter how many minutes he play, but when he gets an opportunity, he'll go out and give you the hustle points that you need in a short period of time. And it was big in the win versus Eastern Michigan, scoring 13 off the bench for Detroit Mercy. Sinking the shot with about 20 seconds left as well to secure the victory. Davis nearly mugged as he tried to go down the baseline for that one. Another lob to the right for Josh McNair. And yeah. Moore is in a bad spot to commit a foul there. And uh, uh, it's a situation right there where, you know, Coach Davis is like looking at me, looking at the plays he's saying, looking at the fouls. And you know, he's talking to the official. They're having a nice little conversation right here. And he felt that, you know, Antoine was fouled on the last play down the court and the officials didn't call it. Eighty to fifty five the score here as they burn a thirty second timeout still ten forty six left to play here and half number two is Mike Davis gets a word with the officials here at the timeout. Yeah, he just want and, I, and I, I got I can just about guess what this conversation is about the contact that happened down there and uh, no, no foul being called he wants to know you know why the falls files are not being called. Well Antoine Davis still second in the nation in scoring behind Chris Clemens of Campbell. He is 29.3. Antoine coming off a 33 point performance trying to cap that here tonight as he's stuck on 26 and look at that dime of a pass to McFally. Wide open over there. Great court vision. Great shot.
You would think more time would, would be gone off the clock right now, but it's still 10 minutes left. <laughs> and that's because of the pace of this game going up and down and so much action happening, but not a lot of time ticking off that clock. McFally gets it up quickly now for Darian King. Just over 10 minutes to play here in the second half. King gets it back and fires and fills it. And they got all three guys putting the ball in the basket right now. They, and that's a good thing for the Titans. Slides a pass to the far side and slamming that one home is Cam Hankerson. 83. 59 trying to take advantage maybe put on some full court pressure here with a timeout we saw that in the Cleveland State game and the lead collapsed quickly not quite as big as this one is right now I mean, you still got to be alert well it's, it's, it's a lot of time in this game I mean you got 10 minutes left in this game and you know you got guys that can score the ball I, you know I mentioned McLeod Hinkinson uh, you know and, and Cohen all those guys can score the basketball go along with pipes so you have to be really careful with this team. It's got to be a 40 minute effort. Uh, and you know, you got to pay close attention to what's happening out here. And I'm sure you're going to see the pressure right now. Well, this is a series lately that has been dominated by Green Bay. Uh, Green Bay's had a good time coming through here in Oakland. They've dominated both teams the last couple of years. And Detroit Mercy has dropped 11 of their last 12 to Green Bay. Trails the all time series. 31 to 25 the Callahan hallmark is 13 to 12 in favor of Detroit Mercy so trying to make it 14 with a win here today long good pass to the outside for Darian King and the Titans are content with slowing it down a little bit more Davis another crossover line drive three pins it through tell you what he's feeling it boy Green Bay wants to get back into this ball game they got to figure out a way to try to slow him down now with his points today, he's already notched his 12, 20 or more game, looking for his eighth, 30 or more game on the next basket or free throw. Is answering right back that time is Travion Bell. Bell doing a good job of giving the second shot. Initial defense was great. They stopped it, but Bell snuck in there and got that offensive rebound. 86 to 61 now. Left side Davis Cole Long is open for three he Ooh. can shoot it and he rips it at that time. How about Cole Long. That's good to see that you know Cole Long came in here with a reputation of being a knockdown shooter and uh, hasn't had a whole lot of opportunities this year but that was a, a big three for him there. Hankerson. Flops it back to Cohen just to the right of the midcourt stripe here. PJ pipes real good shooter from range trying to get that one to go home. Uh uh. Big carom out for Cohen down low and slamming it through is Travion Bell. Titans doing a good job on the initial effort, but they're giving up those second shots right now. Got to be one and done. 89-63, 8 and 30 to play in our second half here. Davis, aggressive cut to the basket there. Got knocked down on his pursuit to the hoop. When needles its way through the baseline, last off the Phoenix here. Jacob Holland going to see some more time for the Titans. As Marquise Moore checks out. It's Hemphill and McLeod coming back in now for the Phoenix. And when you talk about these scores, Hemphill averaging 12 a game, Sandy Cohen averaging 17, McLeod averaging 15. They've been fairly quiet. So far today for Green Bay. You have to get the Titans a lot of credit. The zone defense um, and being in the right places at the right time, knowing what these guys are. They, so you have to give the Titans a lot of credit for the reason why they don't have those points. King. Tightly guarded there on the exterior. Fades away, no. Holland trying to swipe at that one in midair. No dice either. And Hemphill does a good job as he'll push in transition. He does a good job of that with speed into the front court and good handles. 89 to 65. He trims the lead down a little further. 
and, and not looking to set things up. They look to push that ball right down your throat. Holland going to back up down the middle of the floor now. Jacob, pretty floater off the hands of four. Nice bucket by Jacobs. Good pass down low. Titans collapsed on that quickly, though. Swooping up in midair to get another offensive board is Hempfill. Right now, Green Bay's came alive on that offensive glass down here. Too many second shots. Under seven minutes to go, 91 to 65 in favor of Detroit Mercy here. Now Detroit Mercy outscoring Green Bay here in the second half, 38 to 25. It was 53 to 40 after the first half of play. And you see the overall score of 91 to 65 in favor of the home Titans here tonight. Uh, you know, this Green Bay team is a team that's averaging close to 86 points a game, and the Titans have done a good job thus far of holding them from that area. They have to continue to keep doing this in the last seven minutes. Hemphill has struggled at the line this year for the Phoenix, only shooting 41%. I asked Link Darner about that, and he said, to be honest, I think it's a little mental right now. Well, you got him, Jeremy. Good job. <laughs> you put the heck on Broadcaster's curse. <laughs> He's a guy that shot at about a 60% clip in junior college. Just not able to get it going early on in the year. And hasn't changed much. Everything else he does has been extra good as he going to try to get three the old-fashioned way as he lays it off to square it in there. Well, you know, see, Josh uh, made the mistake that time of not going all the way to the basket. He settled for that finger roll going in there, block shot. And this team right here, when you miss a shot like that, they'll push it right down your throat. When I was talking to you about that earlier, when you look to attack and get all the way to that basket, that's when you get the foul, foul call. 91 to 69. Still hanging around. You might think it's 20 plus lead, but this is a team that can score in bunches. When you only take on average about 15 seconds off the shot clock, get to threes off in plenty of time, you can come back into game. Not only that, other teams get caught up trying to play that same type of game with them. Sure. Uh, you know, when they're pushing the ball like that, and you know, before you know it, you know, you're in a rat race with them, and that's not what you want to do. You're playing their game, man. McFally lobs one out to Antoine Davis. Both of those players have 29. Darian King from deep range here. A little bit too long. It's Bell who picks up the rebound. Cohen slides it back outside. Three is no good. Great job by Harrison Curry to dive in for that defensive board. He now has eight rebounds, four on each side of the floor. Not only did Harrison grab that rebound, uh, he, he took about two or three people out. <laughs> he pulled it down. He can do that. He's a big body down there. He's played 18 minutes here tonight. A lot more than he's been playing lately. Only played five here at home versus Northern Kentucky over the weekend. And Phil had that one knock off his face. He doesn't believe it. Well, he's not happy about that at all. <laughs> now, here we go with the full court man to man pressure that you would see out of Green Bay right here. And the Titans got to be careful. Right here. Well, he thought Holland kind of crashed in. Harrison Curry, the beneficiary of a nice Holland pass as he lays it off the glass and in. Well, Holland did a good job of attacking that time. Anytime you see the pressure, you got to look to attack. Extends the lead to 93 to 69 now. Just over five minutes left of the ball game here. Cohen guarded in that corner by McLeod. P.J. Pipes going to back it up. Five to shoot. Pipes going to hoist up a long one in and out. And Harrison Curry approaching his ninth rebound there as he picks it up. 
man down there on the boards. He went up and got that one. Davis guarded tightly now by McLeod. Antoine lobs it home. Harrison Curry emphatic slam down the far side of the baseline. I'll tell you what, the Titans are having their way both inside and out. Pipes trying to answer right back. No dice. And at Kareem's right into the hands of Josh McFoley. Titans trying to crack 100. They have a lot of time left to do so. Scurrying pass now into the hands of Darian King. Nifty behind the back flip, little spin by Davis after he took that shot. Couldn't see it fall through though. McLeod got denied on the other end. Wow. <laughs> Great defensive effort that time by Curry. You see two guys going up. Fisher's called a foul, they got him on the arm uh, that time. I think Curry had everything up top pretty clean. And really they called a foul on here. Here you can see him going up strong with the basketball and it looks as if Darren mm. King committed the foul on his arm on the way up. <laughs> Making some noise inside Callahan Hall. Mm -hmm. The Titans don't need a home run ball right now. If they're patient with the basketball look to attack the basket. And you don't need the long shots right now. You want to get something going toward the basket and make this team work on the defensive end and try to burn as much clock as you can uh, with four minutes left in this game. And Curry couldn't handle that one on the far baseline. Four and eight to go. Mike Davis making some subtle adjustments here down the stretch for his squad. He lead it by 25. And Antoine Davis is going to commit his second foul of the ball game there. Clamping down on the fouls down the stretch here, the officials a little bit. Antoine's got to be careful. He picked up a technical in the last game. McFowley picked up two. Mike Davis. Well, you don't want these guys on the line right now. That means the clock stop and they're scoring points. And mm. that's not what you want. I think Antoine may be trying to say that McLeod pushed off a little bit on his way to the 10 that time. McLeod, 84% free throw shooter. Native of North, Ch North Chicago, Illinois. Transfer from Highland Community College. This one down low again for Curry. He's going to have to earn the two points that time as they disrupt the shot down low. Well, he went up strong with that one right there. He wanted that bucket bad. Fortunately, he couldn't get it in. The guy was hanging on him too much. So still four minutes left. That clock has been ticking down slowly. The good thing for Detroit Mercy, they've held on to their lead for the whole contest. Well, the great thing about it, you got multiple people scoring tonight. You know, a big game by Josh putting buckets in the basket and also Harrison chipping in and Darian King. And, you know, we're not talking about just Antoine Davis tonight. We're talking about the Titans. Sure. That's something we talked about uh, so far that had to happen. A little collision down here with Josh. Uh, Ran into the other team's bench down. He comes up limping a little bit. Hopefully he's uh, he's okay. It's going to take us into break. 97-72 is the Detroit Mercy lead. Now a 23% advantage from behind the long line here today. The Titans have made 14 threes on the other side. Green Bay only six, and that's certainly something they do very well and wins them a lot of ball games, Earl. No, 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 no question about it. You know, they can shoot that basketball from out there, and at the rate that they, they take shots, they get a lot of them up. It's good to see Josh McFoley back out there. He's roughed up after banging into one of the chairs here on the sideline. Well, if this were the NBA, Josh McFoley <laughs> would have a continuation call in the bucket there. But, right, uh, <laughs> right. They, they call it on the floor, I guess. And uh, that looks as if it should have been a good shot, should have been continuation. 
take a peek at uh, oh, McFarley the... crashing into the ref, and then yeah, he slipped and slid like he bumped his knee on. A, you know, I'm sure he'll be uh, pretty sore tonight and tomorrow behind that. Josh Nate able to make the front end of a one and one chance. Phoenix have 18 fouls. Detroit Mercy over the limit with three and 25 to go. Nice bullying move by Smith to lay it off the glass and in. One thing about Green Bay, all of their guys have got playing experience and they all get time in the game and the coach is not afraid in any situation to play anybody. Davis, McFarley, Holland, King, and Curry on the floor right now for Detroit Mercy. Shot clock down to six. King handles it, steps back for three. Sputtering its way out. Rebound by Manny Patterson. 6'8", 220-pound sophomore. Been a little quiet here tonight. He can wreak havoc down low, both on the offensive and defensive side when he's going right. Going to see him at the free throw line for the first time today. Patterson's put together, you know, tight end size out there. So. <laughs> He's come off the bench a lot. He started 10 straight games from their game on November 16th to their game on December 22nd. He's a guy that's a little bit banged up. He was limited to eight minutes versus Cleveland State, but he seems to be feeling fine as the last couple days of practice have unfolded. Some more guys coming in here for the Titans. Well, Josh McFally certainly earned player of the game honors today. Picks up 29 points to tie himself with Antoine Davis here today. And that's coming off a one for 10 day versus Northern Kentucky here last Saturday. Well, that's, that's what we, we want to see going forward. Uh, you know, we'll see how he follows this up and you get both of those guys scoring. It makes it really difficult uh, to contain the Titans. If you got two guys on the floor that's putting the ball in the basket and, that's been the plan since the beginning of the season and to have those guys carry the offensive load. Down low, Smith going to draw this back outside. Three ball won't go off the back of the iron. Patterson, along with a couple Titans, battling in that scrum in the center of the lane. If some of these Titans has been working so hard in practice every day and doing everything right here, you can see on the replay that Guys are getting down and dirty right here as the ball get on the floor. You know, you see two or three Titans surrounding the ball, a lot of bodies down on the floor, and that's what coaches like to see. Boga Jewel, Masio Jusma seeing some time for the Titans down the stretch. It's always nice when, uh, when your, your starters can get these guys minutes. I mean, they come in, they work hard every day at practice, and they prepare, try to get the team ready to play games every night. So. When they get these opportunities, these are like quality minutes for them to get out and show what they can do. Juan Perilla, Daryl Riley, Jordan Gorman also checking in for Mike Davis's squad here. This is a man in Bogue Jewel at the line for the Titans right now that has a high upside. He's also kind of struggled with understanding that zone. Well, There's no question if Olga Jewel's going to be a guy in, in the future. He's a freshman here this year. Nice size, nice body on him, and uh, he's a work in progress. Metrically, he rebounds very well. He could be averaging 10 a game. He's in there for a full 40 minutes of play, according to basketball reference. But uh, that's a guy that's going to continue to work at it. And Mike Davis has said it, you know, throughout uh, both the non-conference and the conference season. You're not going to see it as much time as you like unless you understand that zone, unless you get down the zone. And that's something, obviously, that Bo and company have been working on in practice. And certainly for a freshman and a guy that's pretty new to the game of basketball, he's a soccer player growing up. So he's going to continually improve as his Titan career unfolds for sure. Oh, no doubt. And, you know, under the tutorage of Coach Davis, uh, he's a guy that is a good teacher. Uh, and if you listen and you pay attention to what he tells you, you can't do anything but, but get better. You know, after 18 years, you've got a lot of experience with working with a lot of young men. 99-75, Detroit Mercy here with two minutes left to play in this 
Second half of play. Perilla has that one nearly intercepted and tipped by Cam Hakerson. He has 17 tonight in his return home to the metro area from Novi, Michigan. It's a Novi team that's uh, picked up their basketball of recent year. Made it all the way to the Breslin Center this past season. Well, Oakland University is the recipient of a good player, Maddox. Yeah. He's playing up at Oakland right now to Novi. He struggled a little bit uh, as we've gotten closer to conference season. We've been seeing some quality minutes in the first part of the season for OU. He was offered football scholarship at Syracuse as well, so he's a super athlete. Smith. Swinging pass to Patterson as he'll launch a three. That one tipped a couple times, and coming up with it are the Phoenix as they try to put it back up. It's to the minute 22 left in this one. It's been all Detroit Mercy for a while. Halftime score 53 40 in favor of the Titans. They have led the whole time in this ballgame. Been a few times this season where they've had the lead, especially here at home. Kent State, Ohio, a couple MAC games stick out here in the non conference season at Callahan Hall where they were not able to finish the deal. They'll do that here today and then some. I tell you, if they continue to keep playing like this, I think you're going to see the fans get bigger and bigger in this building. See Callahan Hall start to fill up. And for all those fans that stayed at home tonight, they missed out on that pizza, right? <laughs> 80 points at Buddy's. Free you buddies. Know, to get that free Buddy pizza. So <laughs> if you didn't make it tonight, you missed out. Uh, you had an inkling with how much these two teams go back and forth. Obviously, with Green Bay moving at such a quick pace and scoring so many buckets that they do, that we'd get to that threshold here today. Green Bay averaging 86 a game. They have just 77 tonight. Their opponents at 82. Well, the Titans did a, you know, a really good job, you know, in the zone. And there's my guy right there. You know, almost not recognizing. He shaved. You know, he's trimmed down just by shaving all that hair up, up, up there right now. <laughs> he doesn't have a book nowhere in sight tonight. You know, he, you know. The lead's too big, right? Yeah, he's enjoying the game. He said, "I'm not going to read. You know, I'm going to watch this one." The book man. A minute left. Titans are going to snatch first place, at least for now. Perilla jumps on a three there. No good. Gorman with the follow up, too, and the house erupts. The bench loves it as well. Step in front play by Daryl Riley. Aggressive move to the basket there. No. Jusma underneath. He's tied up with Cody Schwartz. You're talking about re reversing things tonight. The Titans with 101 points and Phoenix, you know, with 78. Well, the 101 is by far a season high for Detroit Mercy this year. There it is. They had 91 in a win versus Loyola Maryland here at home. And the second most to that was. 82 the very next day versus Bowling Green in that uh, tip off tournament here at Callahan Hall. Let's see if they can they can pull it off. They get one day's rest here and uh, you know a good Milwaukee team's going to come in and well, like I said it doesn't matter in the horizon who's who's walking through through the doors. You got to be ready every night. And Mike Davis talked about that. He thought on Saturday they were, this team was kind of gassed against Northern Kentucky so he worked them a little less in practice this week in anticipation that hopefully it could be a little bit more rested coming into that game and certainly he's probably happy he's been able to get some bench guys in here at the end of the ball game to uh, you know no, no question he got them out and he's giving them guys a little bit of rest and letting some of these other guys play but uh, the way Josh and the way Davis played tonight if, you know you get those two guys on the same page doing that on a consistent basis they're going to be tough Juusma wants it wing the three is short. Jewel trying to Kareem in for the offensive board there. Couldn't get it as it spun out on the baseline. 12.2 left, maybe one last possession for the visitors here tonight. 
Cody Swartz on the sideline back to Smith. His three ball is through with just under two minutes left in our final score in this one. Detroit Mercy 101, Green Bay 83. Earlier thoughts. Well, I'll tell you what, they played a solid all around game. Coach Davis has got to be satisfied with what he's seen. They got everything they needed out of that zone defense. They forced the team into 18 turnovers tonight, and it was just the perfect kind of game that uh, Coach Davis would like to see his team play. Now it's a matter of bottling that all up and moving it on to Saturday uh, when Milwaukee comes into the building. Now Green Bay will make the short trip to Auburn Hills to take on Oakland on Saturday. They were losing at last check to Milwaukee, and that's the next opponent for the Titans here at home at Callahan Hall. It's a happy Titan bunch here today. They crack 100 for the first time this year. 101 to 83 is your final in this one. For my broadcast partner, Earl Curtin, I'm Jeremy Otto. We'll see you on Saturday, 1 o'clock tip here on WADL and ESPN+. Plus. See you then.